pohonin. Another two week spot done. Time to cruise for the first time since we did our engine service. Lovely clear water, perhaps nice and clear. Nice when you haven't got to stick your hand in there. You can just turn it with your foot and have a look at it. You can probably make out that our propeller is actually a bit wonky. Probably fix that at some point. It's not too bad. It's so nice because everywhere that we've seen so far is really nice, but some of our friends that have come from that way have said that it, oh, it gets really nice up there. And we were like, what? It's already <laughs> nice. So it's just so lovely knowing that the next spot we're gonna go to is gonna potentially be even nicer and nicer and nicer. And that's just so exciting. If everything goes to plan, today should be a nice, simple cruise. Just a couple of locks, that's all. Have you said that we're doing the window wrong? I don't know. Did I? And we are doing the Wendover Arm, which is a cute little arm off of the side of the Grand Union Canal. So let's go and have a look. Really excited. Come on, Ducker. Time for a shift. Wait. It's always weird cruising for the first time after the engine service when you've done it yourself because the engine inevitably sounds a little bit different, it feels a little bit different and most of that should be a good thing because it should be smoother and it's got clean, lovely oil. But you're always just second, well, if you're an anxious person like me, you're always second guessing like, oh, is that, is that a bad thing? Is it leaking? Is it, is it right? I think Gigi's pretty happy with our service job. I'm going to take that as a good thing. You're not getting very far, Amy. <laughs> Gigi sounds smoother and I'm trying to remind myself that that's a good thing and that the change doesn't mean that she's breaking. That's a really good thing. <laughs> good job on the service. Touch wood. Thank you, kind lock keeper. <laughs> oh, good boy! <laughs> Amy's off to set the next lock, as always. Doing the majority of the work while I just wait. I still keep randomly going like this. Just listen to the engine, make sure I can't hear any filters spewing out fuel or oil or something. I think it's all good. You can see just here, Rufus is doing his third poo of the day. <laughs> He's really holding back Amy's attempts to set the locks ahead of us. The weather's still very much holding up to the uh, first false spring kind of vibe. It's quite cloudy, but you're just getting the odd burst of sun and the temperature's quite mild as well, but you ain't fooling us. We know you're not done with winter yet. Coming up to the next lock, and hopefully the last lock, which is also the facilities. Through the lock now. Rubbish. And toilets. Yay! Recycling! Dedicated recycling bins. Oh. That is a rarity. You can actually, according to the CRT's CEO, put recycling into the general waste biffer bins and they sort it because they haven't got the resources apparently to give dedicated recycling ones. So we just try and make sure that they're separated as much as possible. What are you doing? Gotta get rid of the ash because coal ash is toxic. If you're only burning wood, 
then that can act as fertiliser, which is fine. You can probably chuck it in a hedge somewhere, as long as it's completely cold. But with coal ash, it's toxic, so you can't throw it in any hedgerows or anything, because it will just kill stuff and it will make the soil go It just cold. stays there. So, we use our old coal bags, tip it into that, and then dispose of it properly. Facility's all done. Now time to cruise and we've got no lock, so it's just going to be a beautiful sunny cruise, hopefully. So we are now off and we are going into completely unknown territory now because we've been walking up to the cow roast facilities to get the odd bit of Elson sorted and bins but now we've never been this way at all, not even by foot. Yay! Going past Cow Roast Marina. Kathy from the fuel boat told us that cow roast is named because of something about roasting cows, like it's literal. Oh, according to Google it's because it's a corruption of the name cow rest which is where they would have pens and grazing fields to rest the cattle on the way to the market. That's a nice one. But I think to be fair both are just speculation so we don't actually know. Let us know which one you think it is whether it's cow roast as in roasting cows or cow resting. <laughs> Look, it's a little X day higher. I'm really excited for high boat season. I love high boats. They bring such a joyful presence to the water when they're not crushing it to you. <laughs> when they're not drunk. <laughs> yeah. It almost tastes spring. <laughs> How does serviced Gigi feel? Smooth. She sounds happy. It's so nice to be back on like canally canals again. I know we keep saying it, but <laughs> like London was great, um, and even the K and A to be honest. But they just because they're dead ends, and they were really really busy. They just feel different. Like they feel like a different type of canal than like yeah. the middle of nowhere, quiet, quaint like little towns and stuff. I'm so glad that we did them, but. I just feel like they're just harder work, like mentally and physically. You can't just pull over wherever you want, whereas yeah. on these canals you pretty much can. Yeah, and it's a lot, there's a lot more moorings as well, they're not as crammed. gave this lovely runner a lift because the towpath was awful down here so she hopped on we cruised a bit and dropped her back off because she wanted to stay on but she's training for a marathon <laughs> she was so lovely though but we could just see her just like staring at the towpath like i don't know i'm gonna get past this so we backed up picked her up just taking her about a few hundred meters haven't we <laughs> just dropped her off again and she's off bye good luck with your marathon that way Birmingham that way it's funny because our videos are a little bit behind a little bit quite a lot so we might have caught up by now. no but as we're filming this they're right they're a little bit behind so the video of us just entering winter <laughs> and we always have a week or two weeks at the start of winter where we just hate living on a boat and that video has just gone live and <laughs> now it's we're going into spring and it's like oh Everything's amazing, boat life is the best ever. <laughs> Nothing can possibly be wrong. It's just such a sense of relief. Yeah. <laughs> Winter is really cool on a boat, don't get us wrong. There are aspects of it that we love, but it is hard work and having so little daylight does get very tiring. <sighs> a really that long stretch. So we put some revs on and opened up Gigi's pipes. We're opening up the taps and putting our engine service to the test and hopefully in there oil is not spraying everywhere. Because it's good every so often isn't it to give engines a little blast. Gets all that crud that's built up just out. Moving. Apparently. Flying through the water. We'll be in Birmingham in a matter of hours. <laughs> It's 
just startled me because he was just going -la 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 up my arm while I was filming. Uh, a minute ago, a minute ago, he was crawling when the lid was open, trying to go for all our beckers. <laughs> Such an epic bridge. I nearly hit it. <laughs> it's 134 on the brand new. It's a lovely bridge. I bought a bunch of spring flowers to encourage them to come out. So we're gonna replace this wintry assortment with some spring flowers. junction now so I'm just quickly assembling our horn. Still got the backup one though. Here we go. Wendover six and three quarter miles and bridge one of the Wendover arm. It's, oh it's only navigable for one and a half miles. Uh, I think this is one of the ones that they're trying to restore as well. So I'm hoping that means it's in good enough condition to go down and it's not that slough arm. Here we go, the window arm! New waters. Pretty narrow down here and also very shallow, churning up a lot of silt, but no bags or anything. It's very pretty though, through the trees I can just see fields for miles. The sun's gone in though again, so now it's cold. But it's still really nice. overgrown on both sides but it's not as bad as the slough arm by far and it's still quite pleasant. Bridge number two on the Wendover arm. There's a navigation warning. Underwater ledge keep well clear. Underwater ledge keep well clear it says that yellow sign that's really hard to read. Oh god and there's a big turn. Yeah. I'd stay away from this side, I'd rather yeah. hit a wall than a lamp. Sugar factory? Is it? Is it sugar or flour? What's that? In the little packet? Oh yeah. Very clean trucks. Flour! No, oh, it's so freezing flour. <laughs> no way. Where is it on? It's Aldi! Yeah. On the way to Aldi. Right, sharp turn. to thrash it a bit to get the turn around, but looks good to me. Nice. Well done. It's windy, it's blowing me that way, but it's not ideal. Yeah. I think we must have passed the ledge yeah. there. Nice, perfect. So we're going through like some factories now. It looks like they're making self-raising flour. I think we're at the highest point and we can really feel the wind now we're out in the open we're just about 
about to go through an old stop lock. So stop locks were where they would close the canal and then they'd do like a, a measurement to test how deep the boat is sitting in the water which would like give them an idea of how much they're carrying for cargo and then I believe they would have to pay like a tax like one shilling per ounce or that's a complete guess but yeah they they're not actually locks is in the di difference in water they're more like a stopping point a checkpoint for taxes and whatnot So we made it to the little basin and this is it, the end of the Wendover arm. It does carry on there but it's disused. So we're going to moor up and enjoy this little quiet basin for a few days. Right, I'll hop off. <laughs> wow, this is so nice. Whoa, cheapsies. <laughs> we're literally right at the end of the Wendover arm. This beautiful rural middle of nowhere spot. You know what that means though. It could go either way. We'll either have all the internet or none of the internet. Come on, Ariel. Don't let us down. Oh, plenty. It's good internet. Yay! Some rural spots just randomly have amazing internet. Yeah. I think it's probably because there's no interference or something like that, but it seems good. Nothing's ever simple. Moored up. And they're like, oh, middle of nowhere, this would be nice. I'm just on this crest of the hill. I could hear angry shouting. It might have been between a couple, could definitely hear a guy's voice at least. And they must have been quite far away, and the guy just started sprinting down here. And then we could just hear more shouting, can't tell what they were saying. But it sounded aggressive. It sounded like it was getting closer as well. <sighs> so we made it to the Wendover Arms on the silver propeller, so here we are. Another one checked off. And this is the disused section. It's a shame you can't walk along it. Looks like it goes all the way down there, but it's behind the fence. Things seem to have quietened down now. Sure. I hope so. On a separate note, I just hope everyone's okay, because I think it was just a couple having an argument, but I just don't like that sort of thing. But we can't see them. They've gone. They ran off. Hopefully. They ran away and they are fine and they all make up and everyone's happy. Can't go in and get cosy yet. Because we've been cruising, we let the fire go out. So we're going to give it a sweep. We watched one of May Moon's videos last night and she was talking about how you should sweep your chimney and then we looked at each other and thought, oh, it's been a while, hasn't it? it? Doesn't look like anything exploded. So I'm going to go ahead and call our engine service a success. Yay! Ah, I thought I got it in my eyes. Here we go. I don't know if you can see it falling. That's a bit better. It only took like two seconds. Come on. Steady. So this is the old Wendover arm where we could go if it was restored. Look at that. This is our first ever disused canal that we've seen isn't it yeah the closest we've come is the end of the montgomery 
but that was just too narrow and weedy, but there was still water, whereas this is empty. Be careful, Rufus. This would have been an old mooring bay where the moor you could moor up. Looks in pretty good condition. The canals really were such a clever idea for like their time. The fact that you can just dig like a trench and use water's buoyancy to cart massive amounts of stuff around. That's just so smart. We just met one of our subscribers, Karen, hey, and she told us that she's from around here and they are actually working their way down to restore the rest of the canal, so that's so exciting. I think it's six and a half miles long and they've done one and a half miles so far, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So this is the site of the old pumping station where we are. It was built in 1802. Little viewing platform. You can just see the grates there are there and I'm guessing it's under there. Wendover Canal Restoration. Thanks all volunteers. Oh, nice. So Amy, don't you know a bit about this uh, bit of the canal? I do actually, yeah. It was built, it was originally opened in 1799 with water flowing from the chalk spring at Wellhead near Wendover and it was going as a feeder canal to the Grand Union Canal where a pumping station was built in 1802 to pump water from the nearby <laughs> reservoir which you can see yonder to fuel feed the Wendover arms and the main canal to supplement water flowing from the Wendover at times of low rainfall and high demand. You're really good at history I don't oh, yeah. know how you know all that off the top of your head. Yeah it's just great. Very eloquently put as well. Hmm? Nothing. Apparently they've laid 22,000 bricks and spent 25,000 hours restoring it so, so far. So I said, oh, it's in quite good condition, but I think that's because they've been restoring the brickwork and laying new ones. Yeah. I'll have to hire a boat and come down here sometime. Or oh, bring Gigi back. Or Condor. <laughs> Professor Layton at the moment, it's like a puzzle game on the Switch. We've got the pets chilling, a cup of tea. Oh, it's so cosy. A puppet show with finger puppets. You need to move the finger puppets so that there is a blue one on each thumb and a red one on each little thing. So the finger puppet can only move to an empty space on the other hand. Blue guy there and the blue guy there. Yeah! So there was no one can feel those kisses. <laughs> it was kissing my knee and I was, oh, did it by mistake. Oh, I, I didn't see the answer. <laughs> I don't know what I did. It was just a simple piece of Yay. We've gone for a little fake away. So we've got chicken balls, sweet and sour, and fried rice. Yay. And there is also garlic bread, but that's because it was going off. I think we're going to watch a documentary this evening. No, we're not. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> We want, basically, we want, the Fire Festival is such a good documentary. We want one that's as good as that. But we've got our fake away. Uh, it's all cosy. Thank you so much for joining us on our trip down the Wendover Arm. Big shout out to the Chip Pals on Patreon as always, and Andrea and Mr. Stephen Smith for the chips this week. Check us out on our socials where we post pictures and stuff, and we'll see you next time.